PopCultureZone.com is an online shop focusing on hot new comics, including exclusive and incentive variants, CGC graded comics, and tons of other inventory, including pop culture toys and other collectibles, all at low and competitive prices. PopCultureZone.com ships all over the U.S. And if you are buying raw comics, they offer flat rate shipping of only $4.99. That's right, $4.99. Absolute craziness, right? And there's no taxes included, excluding New Jersey. Pop Culture Zone is also on eBay, where they hold a 100% positive feedback rating with over 8,000 completed transactions for this year alone. Make sure to check out the link to their website below as well as their eBay link. So be sure to give them a follow there as well. Uh, Chris, let's just get right into it. Props or flops? What is this segment? Let's do it. Let's do it, guys. All right, remember, this is where you guys get to participate. In this segment, props or flops, upload any comic to your Instagram. Use the hashtag props or flops. Make sure you tag uh, me at journos underscore comics and also tag comic book canon to make sure we see it because hashtags don't work all the time tell us why the book interests you remember it could be a book that you just purchased it could be a book that you're on the hunt for and we will break down the market live on our show now remember this is for investment reasons we're looking at market and value not because you love the book or anything like that you might love it too right um give us context what did you pay for the book if you haven't picked the book up yet and you're you're eyeing it. What's the book going for? This matters for us to be able to properly say, oh, we give that a props or we give that a flops because maybe you overpaid for it and we don't see it going anywhere. That's the rules to the game. We are breaking down three books today on props or flops. I'm going to reiterate too. Don't forget to tag Comic Book Cannon and uh, Journos as well, just so we don't, so those hashtags don't slip through the cracks. That goes for this and FFTC. Yes, Chris, I'm just going to bring up the first one I see right here. Is that okay with you? Let's do it. What do you got? Boom. Look at this. We got, what is that? Pope of Chili Town. I love it. All I think right. that's one of Joe's buddies. Um, yeah. Yeah. I do believe All that. right. We got two beautiful uh, Marvel books here, man. We got Amazing Spider-Man number uh, 122, uh, Death of Green Goblin. And we got Avengers number 47, the first Dane Whitman before he actually becomes, <clears throat> you know, his alter ego. Uh, so let's see what he says here. Facebook Marketplace, local pickup. Can I say something too? Again, yes. guys, we forgot to mention you in the you in the uh, audience oh, yeah. are you're an important part to this because we need your opinion as well. Props or flops to you and why? Just let we love the engagement. So go for it. Yep, absolutely. All right, Facebook Marketplace, uh, local pickup. <clears throat> $275 all in, even got to keep my skin on both kidneys. That is good. <laughs> all right, so let's look at Avengers 47. He breaks it down here. Uh, he's estimating at about a, a 6.0. All right. Uh, he's estimating the Amazing Spider-Man 122 at about a 5.0. All right, let's see what he says down here. Summoning Avengers for props or flops. Black Knight Key seemed to be on a dip post Eternals, but based on who's cast, his long term contract, and that we haven't seen him actually as the Black Knight yet. Yeah, remember in e e Eternals, he doesn't actually take the alter ego. Uh, I think these will 100% pop again. He's the future of the MCU. I don't know how much role he has. I don't know if he's meaning this by saying he's going to be like, a Robert Downey Jr. I don't think he means that, but he's going to play a role in, in the future for, for a long time to come. Uh, we can obviously uh, assume that. Uh, let's see. He also says here. Uh, comments in the way. There we go. All right. Uh, he's, he's the future of the MCU, and we've only gotten the tip of the lance. <laughs> this book was $100 for a solid mid-grade copy. Maybe a 7.0 after some CPR, but firmly a, a 6 as is. He says, okay, so. It looks like he's breaking down the the Avengers forty seven to be a hundred bucks, and he paid about one hundred and seventy five for the Amazing Spider Man one twenty two. So let's look at what these books have been doing on the market. Now, the Avengers forty seven right now, your estimated raw average calculation 
is sitting at about $100. So not bad right there, right? And, and again, that's it, it, we, we are trusting the Pope here. I mean, he is the Pope. Uh, <laughs> that, you know, that 6.0 is a, is a very solid estimate. Now, let's look at some graded sales. And I looked at all grades and, you know, there's very si similar uh, movement in, in all grades. 6.0 average right now in a graded is about 375. Uh, in, or excuse me, at the height of the movie in 2021, it was at 375. Right now, it's sitting at about 150. So not much up from kind of what it's been selling for raw. But those graded prices are still up from the 2020 average. So that's the average going through December of 2020. So again, I mean, that's a, a bit standard for a lot of books right now. You know, post 20, 2020 and 2021, early 2022, we saw a lot of lot of peaks and we saw some, some dipping off, but they're still holding value above what they were, not even pre-COVID, pre-2021. Because remember, the COVID market started to boom in 2020 and this book is still above that. So I think that's pretty solid. Now, let's look at Amazing Spider-Man 122. Uh, get, this is so funny. Guess what an estimated raw 5.0 average is right now, Jeff? Let's see. He paid 275 for them both. He 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 said he estimated that, he, or he said he paid a hundred dollars for the Avengers 47. Guess how much it estimated? Okay. ASM 122 not, in that race. It's not fair because I have the notes right in front of me. Oh. So well, I'll just say I'll just say five hundred fifty thousand dollars. One seventy five. So that puts for both books that puts them right at the the average fair market value. Of course, trusting that his grading skills are 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 decent, right? Now let's look at this. Graded copies have dropped off slightly over the past six months but are still trending higher than two years ago. So that's about January, February of 2021 even. So props or flops. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to give the, I'm going to look at these separately. Okay. ASM 2022, he paid average fair market value, what it's going for right now. I get that book props all day long, all day long. I mean, you can look at the graded sales. The graded sales have a slighter dip than the raws over the last couple of years. But look, it's the market right now. So if you're buying this book at a dip right now, I'm not going to be too mad at you because what do I say about silver and bronze age keys like this? They don't need movies. These are iconic books that have intrinsic value that are inherently going to increase in value over time. Uh, hands down, you know, even with, with the uncertainty of the market right now, five years from now, uh, this book, in my humble opinion, is going to be worth more than what he paid. Now, let's look at Avengers 47. You got a little more volatility here because this move, this book was hyped up, hyped up by the movie. Um, I It's going to take a lot for this book to even get back to that hype because here's the thing. Even if we get the, the trailer or we get a movie, we know that whatever his name is, Jon Snow, I forget the actor's name, that's playing Dane in, in the movies. Even if we see him as Black Knight, the market is what it is right now. And I think it's going to be tough for this book to even peak at what it was. I think it was selling for like, I think it hit close to 500 at the peak. I think the average was about, oh, I said it, 375, right? Uh, the peak hit about, you know, it was an outlier, hit close to 500. But, with it selling for about 150 right now, I mean, we could see that double again, depending on what the market's doing, depending on when we see him in, in a movie again. We don't know when that's going to be, but <sighs> props or flops for this book. Look, it's like I said, it's down. He paid $100 for it. It's a bit more risky. I'm still going to give it a props because it is a Silver Age book. And I still think that in five years from now, this book can be worth more than what it is. <clears throat> I, but but I can almost guarantee that in 10 years from now, this book is going to be worth more than what it is because we're going to have your random run fillers of these Silver Age books that aren't even keys that are in, in mid grade that are going to be worth a uh, hundred bucks. I mean, that's that's going to be happening in probably five years the way um, these books are moving right now. So again, I, it's going to be hard for this book to hit what it hit 
in 2021 because of that movie hype, even with more movie hype. But I still give it a props because of it being down and what it could do in the future. I think this is a solid grab uh, for both of these books right now. All right, before I give you my opinion, uh, we give you Joe's props. This was local to my area, and I'm bummed I'd missed it. And the Pope of Chili Town is here in the house. Boom. Yeah, uh, boom indeed. I think it's a full-on props as well because uh, here's the deal. Obviously, these iconic issues of Spider-Man are are they're 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 just a uh, you know somebody actually said it was like it's it's no risk at all because uh, that you're gonna at least get your money back, and I completely agree with that. I'm big on Dane Whitman here. I think he's going to be a major player in the MCU. I think he's going to be in the next iteration of the Avengers. Um, it's going to happen because you got you got a guy like Kit Harrington, who is the actor playing Dane Whitman, aka the Black Knight. He's going he's going to be back. Trust me. Uh, his introduction was a little um, was left yeah. like wanting more. Right. Uh, but uh, I, I really, really do believe uh, in both of these books as props. No doubt about that. 100%. And I think a majority of people in the in the comments, actually, there were no flops. No flops. Uh, so, yeah. So, again, we appreciate you guys um, giving your opinion because that's part of this whole segment, too. Uh, it's a major part. So, yeah. All, all agree. Props. Everybody across the board. Good job, Pope of Chili Town. And I'm pretty sure, Joe, correct me if I'm wrong, that Joe is pissed that you got those books before he did. Joe, just admit it. All right, Chris, we have another props or flops submission. What do we got? All right. <laughs> Let's bring it up. Oh, boy. The most overhyped character ever. <laughs> ah. Oh, some people will be pissed about that. Oh, I know. I'm going to get the haters. And it's funny because this is this is uh, Deadpool's, um, this is a segment. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's true, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, Comic Rhino, thank you so much, Comic Rhino, for the uh, submission here. We got a, a 9.0 CGC graded book. Let's read what Comic Rhino wrote. I recently decided I needed to focus more on buying big keys of characters that I really like. Uh, Venom was the first series I collected as a kid, but I already have a main Spider-Man 300, so I had to move on to the second series I collected, Deadpool. I stumbled upon an auction for New Mutants number 98, Australian price variant and was uh, the winning bidder picking it up for eight ninety. dollars Ooh, Australian dollar or which would be $612 USD. He's from Australia. The cherry on top was giving getting a 7% 7 discount on the price, which brought it down to 569 USD. The only thing that concerns me is the different release date. What do you think? Okay. So, uh, here's the thing. All right, let's let's do this because this is a very interesting situation here. This is not your standard um, uh, copy. This is an Australian variant. Now, we know that Canadian price variants tend to go for a little higher most of the time. We know that UK price variants tend to go for a little bit lower. So we got to look specifically at uh, what this book is is doing on the market. Now, we're going to compare the two here. We're going to compare the standard um, uh, edition in a 9.0, okay? 9.0 current fair market value is 375. Wow. So that is much lower than what he paid for this book. And again, this is graded 9.0. Um, the peak was about a $500 average at peak, which was about one year ago. Um, that's a 25% drop off. It's currently trending right around where it was two years ago, around January of 2021. So how does that compare though to, um, the Australian price variant? So the only data we have, check this out. The only data we have is his sale, his sale in an oh, really? Yep. Yep. That's crazy. That's we, that, yeah, that's what we have. Now, what do we let, let's go to the next best thing here? We're gonna go to a 9.2, which is $711, which was two months ago. Man, this is tough. But here's one thing that we do know in that seems because oh, let's go to an 8.5. Let's go one down. Now, this was in 2019, guys, before COVID hype and anything, but when did Deadpool 2 come out? 2018 
Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, I think it was after that. That sold for five forty-five. So the one thing here is that it does seem that the the Australian price variant is commanding a premium. So that's a good thing. This is really tough to to, to gauge because. I mean, you, you you had a 9.2 sell for 660 in May of 2022. So, I mean, it's been holding its value. These And there's not many sales to gauge from. That's why it's hard for me to sit here and, and say, well, what, what's the actual value for this? And do I give it a props or flops? But what I am seeing is this. He's a little above what an 8.5 sold for almost four years ago. And he's... Well below, I mean, he's a hundred and what forty dollars below what a nine point two sold for just a couple months ago. I think that's a solid kind of in between there. I'm going to bring up another thing that I think is important, Jeff. Go for it. And that's the fact that <clears throat> when you're in Australia, you don't have, in even the UK or other parts of the world, you don't have the means to get your hands on books like many of us in the States or even in uh, North America, Canada have. So here's, here's the thing that I think supports comic Rhino here. Not only do I think he paid a decent fair market value for this book, but he kind of benefited from being in Australia, <laughs> which doesn't happen much because of the lack of access because the Australian price variant commands a premium. Oh man, props or flops. Most overrated character ever. <laughs> the market's down. This book seems to be doing decently well in the market because probably of its scarcity. Oh my God, Jeff, oh, what do I do? I am going to give. I'm going to give it a props. Ooh. I'm going to give it a props. Now, let me explain something here. The current fair market value for this 9.0 in the standard edition is around 300 right now, down from 500 from two years ago. If he told me that he got the standard edition 9.0 and he paid $300 for it, I'd probably give it a flops. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's fair. Because I think I, I, I just I this book is one that I, I don't I don't know. I, I'm still not sold on because of the market right now and because of the ebb and flow, because of the movie hype and, and everything else. And we just got the trailer, right? That that teaser trailer with Hugh Jackman, yeah. which which, you know, the book was trending down. That could have drove the book up a little bit because I saw some sales for under 300 just, you know, not too long ago for the standard edition. So for me, now, when's this movie releasing? Is it is it this year or is it? Uh, no, they no. know. I mean, right. Right. You it's are starting to train for it right now. Right. So probably so right around the corner. They're going to start shooting. We haven't even shot. We haven't even filmed. Nah, nah, I nah. could honestly see, at least in the standard edition, I could see this book dropping more. With the state of the market right now, I mean, this book is plentiful plentiful out there. Um, don't get me wrong, man. I, I Deadpool is a great character. And I, I could almost consider this a future blue chip key. Um, almost. But I'm hesitant to even do that. But the book is volatile and it's just that simple, but I am going to give some grace here because of being the Australian variant. I think that that book is so hard to find that I, I don't see it necessarily going down much. And by the time we do get the official trailer of the next Deadpool film, knowing that Hugh Jackman's going to be in it, these books, including the standard edition, they're going to go. I, I think they definitely can shoot back up to that 2021 hype. Um, you know, COVID market peak uh, because there's going to be a lot of freaking Deadpool craze just for the simple fact that he's going to be in the MCU with Hugh Jackman. But be prepared, guys. When it dies down again, the book's going to drop again before it starts to go back up because of its intrinsic 
you know, comic book value that's going to be there a decade from now. Yeah, this is a tough one for me because I'm not that well versed in kind of um, <clears throat> international variants. Uh, it is rare. It is a rare, uh, you know, according to like cover price, they have labeled it as a rare book, um, a hard to find book. Um, I, I, I'll, I'm not as down on this character as you are, Chris, because he is making his way into the MCU. So now that has not been mentioned at all. And the MCU is a force in terms of how it affects the market value on all these books. So for that right there, I will give it a props because I think there is more room. I, and again, I understand what you're saying about it being overrated. I understand there's, you know, this was the nine, early 90s. So they were producing a ton of these books. This book was hot. New Mutants was hot because Layfield was hot. Uh, two more issues left in this run. And then they start, uh, what is it? X-Force. So... Yeah, I I really do believe that, that this is a, fl- a a prop in my opinion, and this is this one's been a divisive one. A lot of people, you know, giving uh, other other uh, you know a lot of flop. Even Mark Lenniker, he needs a prop because he was <laughs> really on the fence as well. Uh, Comic Toby gave it a flop too, but you know people like Raw Dog gave it a flop uh, prop. Um, a lot of you guys gave it a, a prop, so I'm going to just say I'm definitely going to say props because it's a rare book and. Uh, I think this character is going to blow up even more in the MCU. I think they're going to get wild with, you know, you know how like uh, the multiverse of madness was wild. I think it's going to be comedically wild the way they incorporate a ton of cameos and all that in his film. And it's going to be uh, including Wolverine. So uh, that being said, it's just, I'm just going to talk about my 9.8. And I, the reason I'm saying this, it's not, a, it's not a newsstand. It's not an Australian price variant, but I bought this off the rack guys. And it was in my collection for years before I got it graded at CBCS, and I got a 9.8 on that. And my brother's collection, he has um, a newsstand, so I don't know what the gr- grade is on that, but I'm probably gonna probably going to uh, mess around with that. A hard to find book doesn't necessarily equate to a lot of people actually looking, though. Definitely volatile, but cool nonetheless. I I think there's enough word out on. A book like this, especially because the character on, um, you know, uh, I, I do, I think it's going to equate to uh, an in-demand book. Chris, you have, I know you have different yeah. thoughts. No, no. That. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree with Brendan. I say this all the time. You know, people think, oh, it's rare. Well, you know, freaking there. I mean, what, what's rare? Like this, this little piece of cardboard is rare because it's the only one that I own and I can sell it to you for a thousand dollars because it's rare. <laughs> Just because something is rare doesn't mean people want it. It doesn't matter. There yeah, could be five of something, and if nobody wants it, nobody's going to pay a penny for it. But this book, show and prove with the market, there is a demand for it, and it's uh, correlating to its to its scarcity and rarity. Why? Because, well, the value of it is like it's consistently been about double that of the, the standard edition fair market value. So that goes to show, and look, People value these price variants, especially Canadian, obviously Australian. I think it is very interesting about UK variants not getting um, as much love. I do believe there's, um, you know, at least during the, um, you, you know, uh, silver, bronze, and, and probably even copper, uh, I do think there's a much higher uh, print run for UK next to Australian, or I don't even know when Australian uh edition started to be uh, printed but you know there there's definitely less canadian so that factors into but they're staying power for that they're staying power for this um and there is absolutely a unique demand because of the rarity of this book i have a buddy who ran a comic book shop who in australia uh and we may we should have him on the show he lives in new york now but we should have him on the show because i'm sure he could answer that question um and this is a good point from Sean Miller. With the state of scripts and plots being turned out by Marvel and Disney, most keys are too volatile. Uh, however, with Reynolds' involvement with the character, New, uh, New Mutants 98 is a safe bet. I agree with that wholeheartedly. I don't. I think, I, well, I let me, I think it's um, volatile with villains. Like, I don't think those are safe bets because a lot of the times they're one and done. That could be changing a little bit. Uh, but... Um, I I don't I don't, overall I don't think it's too volatile. Go ahead, Chris. Well, I mean, we could just look. 
Ryan Reynolds has already been in two Deadpool films. Every time the movie was about to come out, the book exploded and then and then it dipped. So there's already, I mean, I could come here in a court of law and bring the evidence to say that that right there, love you, Sean, but I'm going to argue this. Um, it's it's not safe from the state of the market. It, it doesn't matter because he's saying that he's saying the same thing you are with the state of the of the scripts and plots being turned out by Marvel. Most keys are too volatile. Nothing. Every, everything is volatile. You got to understand the MCU. And I've talked I've been talking about this for the last year straight. This is what I did in 2021. Every single Marvel book almost. I, I can't say hundred percent because I don't have everything in front of me, but I study the market, even big characters. The FOMO is so real mm. that books mm. have been dropping off. Um, it's just the name of the game right now. We get the announcement. We get the trailer. We get the hype and the release of the movie. Something's going to cool off. This has already happened with Ryan Reynolds uh, films with this book. And I'm not saying it's it. This book, actually, I've been a proponent of this book because people say it's, you know, the movie comes out and then people don't care about it. That's not true. If you look at the, what was it, 2016 and 18 when the two, I forget. If you look at the trend, it dipped, but it never dipped below what it was before. So there's staying power. Yeah. So what I disagree with is the, the fact that there is no volatility in this just because there's Ryan Reynolds. There is volatility in everything MCU right now because you got a lot of people simply specking because oh. of MCU, period. It, it, and you, you have to understand that. I've always been a proponent of the fact that we get hyped off of the MCU and it makes us want to buy books. But more now than ever, remember even in the 2021 economy, when it's, it's changing a little bit now, FOMO was still out of control. You saw you saw key books dropping off, <clears throat> but then when Frogman showed up in freaking She Hulk, that dollar bin book jumped up to a fifty dollar book. So you got to understand, I I can, there's almost a guarantee that this this uh, this book actually because and this is what Jeff was saying because it's Ryan Reynolds in the MCU. Because it's Ryan Reynolds with Hugh Jackman. Because, like Jeff said, MCU is going to milk this and do something. Not milk it. That's not the right word. They're going to do something special and different yes, with this. Yes, they are. Because of that, I do believe that this book can jump up to a new high. But best believe, after all that dies down, it's going to go down some again before 10 years from now, it starts you know, going in new highs because of the intrinsic value. That's that's all I'm saying. There is nothing is nothing is bulletproof just because it's empty MCU, just because so many, and you could label them however you want. Oh, they're not real collectors. It's flippers, it's speculators that don't even read comics, it's normies, it just it doesn't matter. It's people <laughs> with, with FOMO. It doesn't matter. People have forgotten that books are inherently valuable. And that just because a character is going to show up in a movie or TV show doesn't mean that you need to flip out like a dope fiend and give me, give me, give me, give me, need it now and take a one dollar book and pay 50, 60, 100 dollars for it. But yet that's now the mindset. So we got to kind of balance things back out, hopefully over the next couple of years with that. But I don't know. Yeah, Hope that makes sense. I like what uh, uh, Brennan Riley says. Nine times out of 10, the average value of a key book prior to MCU hype spikes is likely what a book will drop back to after that hype dies down. Price history is important to pay attention to when investing. Yep. Chris talks about that quite a bit. Uh, we got issues only spec on cool art, a great story, or your favorite character. You can never go wrong. Um, more and more I see spec and variants and FOMO makes me glad I collect Spidey. As, as long as I can remember that title is as safe as collecting gats, it's kind of true. Um anyways, but uh <laughs> and Pope of, Pili of Chili Town. If I'm hearing you right, buy Hypno Hustler now at any price. Is that what that's what you Chris? You said that. You said that, Chris. What? I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. That right there. Uh, that wraps up uh props or flops. We love this segment because you guys are a part of this segment just as much as us. Uh your opinion counts. 
probably more than ours. Uh, one more time, Chris, give it to them. What can they do? One more time. Again, this is for investment reasons. We break down the market. Upload your combo book that you just purchased or you're in the hunt for to IG. Use the hashtag props or flops. Plops or flops. Make sure you tag combo book cannon. Tag me as well, journals underscore comics. Tell us why the book interests you. The more information, the better, so we can uh, give a valid props or flops. Tell us what you paid for it or what the sticker price is and what you're looking for. We will break it down on the show. On the show, that is right. And again, that was that was a lot of fun. I love doing this segment. I love your participation. Audience participation is huge. 